Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Seving. Today is a stash with Stephanie Day. For anyone who's new here, we do this once a month where I create a new back quarter friendly pattern to be inspired by some of the fabrics that we put out with our stash club called Stashing with Stephanie. And for anyone who's a member of the club, they get this pattern and all the others that we've created for it for free. And for anyone who is not a member, then they get, they can just get the pattern or um, get the kit for it as well if you've used up all your stash for mask making. I, this is the first like non-mask video we've done in a month. And it feels a little weird to do it because right now I feel like a lot of us are really focused on doing that and that's great, but I also know that a lot of you also need a little bit of a mental break from it as well for your own, you know, well-being and mental health. So uh, we are going to continue with this, plus our Stash Club members. This is part of their benefits of their subscription, and so they get the 12 back quarters, the free pattern, access to all the other ones, all for $29.99 a month, uh, plus shipping, and then they get discounts for future... Um, purchases as well if they need a finishing kit because they want to make it uh, as they see it here. So it's a really great club to be a part of. Um, but again, it feels a little weird to do a quilting video right now because we don't want to appear tone deaf because we're not. But uh, we also know that you guys might need a break from mass a little bit. And if you have any stash left, uh, this is a pattern that you can use for it. Or you can always join our club and get some benefits there. We'll put more information about it in the video description and in you can uh, get a link to where you can sign up there as well. It's a great club to be a part of. People really enjoy it and it's a good way to get inspired to do something new every month. So this month's block, uh, we are going to be using fusions. Uh, this is, we're combining two fusion lines from Art Gallery Fabrics. And I love Art Gallery all their prints kind of tend to work and play nice together, even though there's lots of different designers. They've done a really good job of collecting people who kind of have a similar artistic, um, they just go well together. They, they coordinate well from color and from line to line. And their fabric is very high quality. It actually, when you feel it, it feels a little bit thinner, but it has the highest thread count in the industry. So if you are getting it to make masks, you can have a really fashionable one that is extra protective because the thread count is very high. Um, and it just, I love it. So let's take a little bit closer look and then we're gonna get into this month's pattern. So for this month's Fashion with Stephanie, we are doing a combination of the Marrakesh and the Rosewood Fusions by Art Gallery Fabrics. And every once in a while, Art Gallery does a Fusions line and that's where a bunch of their designers collaborate and they have shared color palettes and but you get to see a little bit of the actual individual designs from each of the designers that we know and love. So some of the designers that have participated in this are of course Pat Bravo, and then also Mr. Domestic, Sharon Holland, April Rhodes, Katrina Rochella, hopefully I pronounced that one right, Barry J, and Bonnie Christine. So we've got some really pretty ones in this one. There's some great teals that we started with as well as those really, rich pinks and I really just love Art Gallery because all their lines kind of can mix and match together and this rich gold is just really fun to work with and it really kind of brings all those colors together from the different bits. This is definitely a Berry J um, with all that painted texture and it's just a really fun line to work with and something really cheery for this time. So the construction of this month's block is absolutely 100% inspired by my friend, Shar Toady. She wrote a book a few years back called Nickel Quilts with Pat Speth, and it is all quilts that can be made with five inch squares. So definitely check that out if you are a fan of Shar Packs. Um, but the technique we're gonna use today to create the block is one that I first learned from her in that book. And it's not just an industry friend that I knew. I knew her long before I got into the professional side of the industry. We actually live in the same metro area and we go on quilt retreats together all the time. And she is fantastic and you should definitely check her out. So what we're going to do is we first are going to, we're using a little bit bigger block than five inch because we want to be able to finish this quickly. Um, we're going to draw a line from corner to corner on the wrong side of your background piece. And then you're going to layer that right sides together with one of your back quarter prints. 
And I did not pin any of these when I was putting them together. Uh, but if you want to, what you should do is you should pin across the top and across the bottom. Because what matters when you do this block is that your points are going to be together at the top and the bottom because we're going to sew down both sides of this drawn line to create our half square triangle. And so if you're pinning way out here, this can really shift on you. So it's not going to do as, as good as if you just pin across the top and across the bottom to keep those points in line. Now I'm going to show you how to do this on the sewing machine as well, but I think it's a really good visual when you can see it with just the presser foot. So what you're going to do is you're going to line up your presser foot with the, this line as though it were the edge of the fabric. Typically when we're sewing, we're lining up the edge of our presser foot nice and even with the edge of our fabric like that. But when we do this, what you want to do is pretend that you've already cut these apart and they're two triangles. So what you're going to do is you're going to sew a scant quarter inch seam down one side and you're going to flip everything around and you're going to sew it down the other side. So that way you have stitching that's a little bit less than a half inch apart and a little bit less than a quarter inch from this center line. And then we're going to cut down the line to reveal two half square triangles and you kind of get two for the price of one. The reason why I like to do it this way is one, it's a lot more efficient to do it this way. You can get your quilts done a lot faster. And two, this uh, is on the bias. So whenever you're dealing with something like this, there's going to be some more stretch when you're going on the bias then when you're going from side to side here, you can see that this is not really giving at all, whereas this gives quite a bit. And that is just how it works when fabric is woven. So if you are sewing this together, when our, your two halves are still attached to each other, then it is going to be much less likely to have stretch from your sewing machine or your feed dogs than if you were to cut it first and then sew it. Um, this is especially important to do if you are using fabric that is not from a quilt shop. That fabric is far more likely to stretch on you if you got it at a chain or a big box store. It's not that you can't use it, it's just that it's, it's just not as high quality and so it's not gonna retain its shape as well from something that's a quilt store. But even you can see here, this is one of the best fabric bases in the industry and it still has some good amount of stretch to it. So this is just helpful to get those points exactly where you want them and this is how I sew all of my triangles if I can make it work this way. Alright so I've got my sewing machine set up to sew a quarter inch stitch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press a button on my machine which will move my needle one needle width to the right. And so that will just let me sew just a little bit tinier seam which I like to do whenever I'm doing anything where I'm making triangles from squares. Just give you a little bit of extra wiggle room because I would rather have more to trim off than not enough. If your machine doesn't do that, then you can just sew a little bit over instead of having your edge right even with that line, you could have it just a little bit over and that would be a nice workaround for that. All right, so I've got that started, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that pin. You don't want to sew over those. I've had needles break and find them out. Not fun. All right, so I'm just sewing down, making sure to keep this line nice and even with the edge of my presser foot. When I get to the end there, I'm going to go ahead and pull that pin, make sure my corners are nice and lined up and sew all the way off. Now, if I were chain stitching, and I recommend that you do, you would just lift up your presser foot, slide the next piece inside, put it down, and keep on going and sew down all one side of them. When you get down to the very end, all you're gonna do is you're gonna pull it out. You don't even have to clip those threads. And you're gonna line up the edge of your presser foot with the that line that we drew, and now just sew down the other side. that's important and will help you get really straight seams with this is when you get to the point here where you can no longer hold on to it you want to hold your finger to the side and that way you can help guide it and make sure you maintain that accurate scant quarter inch seam all the way down because sometimes you'll get it where it looks like a little smiley or frowny face where your seam is just not straight and that doesn't mean that your fabric stretched out on you although it could mean that 
a lot of times it just means that you didn't maintain a straight quarter inch seam throughout the entire bit. So by holding your finger here, you can do that. And also I recommend that you do not use your start stop button on your machine to sew these because you need to be able to control your speed and slow down when you come to those points to make sure that they are very nice and accurate. So those are all ways that you can help have more accurate piecing and more accurate blocks when you're all done. So if I zoom in, you can see that there's a stitching line here and here, and it should measure half an inch or less, hopefully less, and it is. It's just a hair under half an inch, so that's great. That's exactly what we were hoping for, so that way we could have that scant quarter and seam and plenty of room to have our block turn out the size it's supposed to be. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut down this drawn line. And when you do this, it's important that you stay pretty much down the center of where you sewed. It's not super important that you're exactly on that line, but you don't want to get too skinny either. As if your seam gets too small, like less than an eighth of an inch between the edge of your fabric and the seam line, then that has a chance of popping open with use or even while you're actually sewing it together and quilting it, it can pop open because it's just too skinny. So don't worry so much about staying exactly on the line, but do make sure that you've got a good quarter inch or so, um, at least an eighth of an inch between where your seam line is and the edge of that fabric. All right, so now you can kind of see how this works out. We've cut this apart and we now have two half square triangles for the price of one. So that works out pretty good, makes it go pretty fast. So I always press my seams open, especially when I'm doing triangles because it allows really sharp points and then you don't end up with that thick buildup of the seams. And there's always somebody who comments that the seam isn't as strong and you can't stitch in the ditch. And let me tell you, I stitch in the ditch on these all the time. And I know a lot of professional quilters who have long arms who do the same and have not had any problems. Um, so you can feel free to do that. But just press them open. I kind of just talked through that really fast. All you're gonna do is you're gonna open it up and then I keep my three fingers down ahead of the uh, seam and then just press that straight open and straight across. And your seam should be nice and straight here. You shouldn't have any wiggles. If you see a wiggle, then that means there's a pleat on the other side and it's not gonna be the right size. And it also should be really straight. You shouldn't have those frowny or smiley faces that we talked about earlier. That indicates that your fabric either stretched when you sewed it together or uh, you maybe did not maintain your quarter inch seam all the way down. Usually what I do also is I will press it from the other side as well and the seam is just super, super flat at this point and it is because of that press seam. Um, a lot of times when you're doing this and you're folding it to one side, it can make it also curve up a little bit on the sides and also it, it makes one side be a little bit smaller because you are taking up a little bit of that space as you are folding that over. So if you're really tight and one side is always a little bit smaller than the other, it's because you pressed your seam to one side instead of pressing it open like this. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this guy down. I'm gonna talk through that process as well. So what we're gonna do is we're going to line up our 45 degree line with that seam line. That is the most important one that you have to be lined up on because if you're off, like say like this, where my 45 degree line is going more over to the side there, it's going to never be able to get that point truly into the corner. So you've got to make sure that that 45 degree line is on there. Then I'm making sure that I've got some fabric going past the measurement I need to trim this down to, and then past the side here as well. And then I always like to stand up as I cut. I know you see that I'm sitting here, but I'm actually going to stand when I go to do that part and you're watching it on our overhead camera. And the reason is, is I can see a lot better of what I'm doing. I cut a whole bunch of these when I was like nine months about to pop pregnant sitting down and it was nowhere near as accurate as when I stand because you can just see better. So it's worth it. Get to counter half height and do this while you're standing and you'll have better results. All right. So I've got that 45 degree line. I've got some fabric hanging off past the sides. So we're going to go ahead and give that a little trim. Take that away. Now we're going to flip it around and now this side has been trimmed to size. So now I'm going to line this up with the measurement that I need to trim it down to. 
And so that is exactly on that measurement. And then I also am making sure that my 45 degree line still is along that seam and especially coming up to the top here because that is, again, the most important part. So once I'm satisfied with all that, I can go ahead and cut across the side and the top. And I'm right-handed, so for me, that's always gonna be the right and the top. It'll be reverse of uh, the left and top if you are a lefty. All right, so this is a part of the block that was inspired by my good friend, Shara Toti, in her book, Nickel Quilts. So what you're gonna do here is we're just gonna cut this in half twice, and it's gonna give us two half square triangles and one full square, and it's all going to be from one piece of fabric so that way we don't have to worry about cutting different sizes and keeping track of everything because that can be challenging. We just had to start with two squares of the same size and we were able to get two different types of units. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm just going to line this up and I'm lining up with the measurement I need to trim to on the side and then making sure that my top and bottom are nice and even. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make that vertical cut. Now this is the important part. I'm going to lift this up and without moving anything here, I'm going to go ahead and lay it back down so that way my measurement that I need to cut to is now on the bottom and everything is nice and even here. And then I can just cut right across the top there. And so now here's where the magic happens. We have now ended up with two half square triangles and one square from our fat quarter fabric and one square from our background. So once you've done that for all of your fat quarters that you're using, you can mix it up and have a lot of fun creating fun combinations. And then we're just gonna sew this together like it's a regular four patch, but I am gonna give you some tips to get these points to come together absolutely perfectly. So I went ahead and put my stitch back on a quarter inch seam, and I'm gonna go ahead and flip these guys right sides together. I don't pin these. What I typically do is I just grab my corners and line those up because they should all be the exact same size because we just trimmed it down. Um, if you feel more comfortable pinning though, by all means, please go ahead and do that. I just get it started and then I make sure my points are lined up at the end and sew down. Do the same thing here. I'm going to go ahead and chain stitch all these. ahead and press these open as well. Again, that makes for a much flatter block and a much more precise point. I'm going to go ahead and press that from both sides to get it super flat. And one thing I really love about Art Gallery is it really holds a press very well. So you can get some really beautiful joins with this fabric. It also is very soft and drapey to work with. So while it is quilting cotton, it also works really well if you're doing garments. So this is my number one tip for getting beautiful points every single time. Now you can see that as much care as we took, that these are not necessarily the same distance away from the edge on both of those pieces. So what I'm going to do is pin it twice and you'll see how I do this. You can see on the back that you've got three seams coming together here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pin in right at the tip of where those triangles are coming together, just like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, putting it in just at the tip of where these triangles are coming together. Now I'm going to pinch that so that that pin is going straight up and down. And sometimes when you do this, it's not perfectly in line. Like you can see that this is not exactly even with the edge of that there, and that's okay. Uh, sometimes it's gonna look way off on the inside, but you know what? I would much rather have those points be on on the outside where people are gonna see them than have a little bit of a weird looking seam on the inside that no one is ever gonna see. All right, so once I've got this, pinch straight up and down. I'm gonna come in and I'm going to pin on the right side of that seam allowance. And that's gonna help hold those points right on top of each other. And I can go ahead and remove this pin. So now when I sew, I'm gonna stitch along until my needle is fully down on this first half of the seam allowance. And only then am I gonna pull this pin out because if you leave your needle down, it kind of acts like a pin, holds everything in place, and you are much less likely to have seams that don't turn out the way you want them to. 
I also am going to make sure to sew one needle width to the right of where all those points come together. That way we don't clip off any of those points and blunt the tips just a little bit. All right, so I've sewn just one needle width to the right of that and I've stopped with my needle down. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and line up those corners, put a finger on top of it to hold it together. Although you could pin if you wanted to. And stitch all the way down. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a peek at this and yeah, those points come together pretty good. And again, I'm gonna press these open because that again is also gonna help you have really sharp joins because everything is gonna be nice and flat as opposed to getting pushed from one way to another and just having a lot of bulk in there. It just makes your points look so much better when you're able to press everything nice and flat. All right, I am really happy with the way that that came together. It's a pretty fun looking block. It's very fast to do. And so it is a great way to make this quilt and make it quickly. And then you can get back to mass making if that is what you're working on and you just need a little bit of a break. Make sure to use that two pinning technique when you are joining your rows together as well because you will have some triangle points that need to be joined there. And it is really helpful to do that all the way around whenever you have triangles. And you will, your points are just going to get so much better. You're really going to love the way that they look. So I really hope that you enjoy this quilt block. It goes pretty quickly. Um, we have been working our tails off trying to get you guys mass supplies. So I was able to get this done in between all that. And also watching kids for homeschooling our five-year-old. And we've got a almost three month old that eats every two and a half hours. So we've, we've been a little busy uh, during this time. So the fact that I was able to get this quilt done which truly speaks to how fast and, and simple it is, even though it ends up looking a little bit more complicated when it all comes together. So thanks so much for watching this video. And again, if you want to learn more about stashing with Stephanie, you can click on the video link down below. But essentially, you get 12 back quarters from a brand new fabric that's been released. And you get that for the price of 10, it's $29.99 a month plus shipping. And then you get a free pattern to go with that fabric every month. You get access to all of the Stash with Stephanie patterns that had been released to date. And then also you get a coupon that you can use to get additional fabric to coordinate with it or a finishing kit if you want to make that quilt in a larger size and you need some more fabric to do it. So thanks so much for following along and until next time, happy quilting.